Hi folks, this is a short video segment that I'm doing to describe the offset option when you use shell elements in CATIA V5's uh, finite element solver. Uh, this uh, shows up in two places. One is uh, in the global parameters when you try to mesh the, uh, the surface with shell elements. And the second one uh, is in 2D properties uh, where you specify basically the thickness of the shell element. Okay, so I will be discussing this in the context of uh, the following geometry. <clears throat> so suppose you have a bracket that you see up there. The bottom of the bracket is a uh, clamp and the top face is subjected to some kind of a pressure. The actual numbers are not important, but uh, uh, this is the setup. Now, uh, keep in mind that because of the, 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 the nature of the size and uh, basically the thickness of this part, <coughs> uh, it is not a good idea to do this thing with, uh, with solid elements because if you do that, for example, it's shown down here, uh, in order to have sufficient number of elements through the thickness, you need to have a very fine mesh, okay? Now, this particular model that I've done with three, uh, mesh that I've done with three elements actually has only one layer of uh, solid element through the thickness, which is not good, but in spite of that, you can see, you can see that you're dealing with a lot of elements. A problem like this is uh, more appropriately solved with uh, shell elements as a first, first uh, basically, uh, uh, first attempt, okay? <clears throat> Now, uh, the, 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 the model has been created uh, and I'm going to use it, so uh, it's very simple. Uh, what, I've, uh, what I've done, when you, when you try to do this thing with shell elements, you basically represent this particular, let's think about it as folded sheet metal with a surface. Now that surface is, can be, for example, uh, uh, you can extract the bottom face, which is shown here, or the top face, they're both shown there. So the solid one, the, the actual solid part is the gray one. The top face, if it's extracted, is shown on the right side and the bottom face also on the right side. So you can mesh these one or the other, don't do both of them, one or the other with shell elements and then do the problem. The more appropriate thing to do is actually to take the mid surface of this uh, gray part, the mid surface that uh, looks like this, for example, you can see that. So actually the thickness, if the thickness of the part is 0.5, the mid, uh, the mid uh, 0.5 inch, the mid surface is located at 0.25 from uh, one or the other, okay? <clears throat> I'm assuming that you do not have the mid surface, okay? I'm assuming that you insist on doing the problem with CATIA, having extracted either the, the bottom surface or the top surface. Okay, how do we fix things if we know that this has to be done more appropriately with the middle surface, okay? So uh, there is uh, the this, this slide that I, that I skipped. Uh, what you see here is the top surface extracted or the bottom surface extracted. The, the thickness of the part is 0.5 inch. It is best if you have if you have access to the middle surface, and then mesh that with a shell element of thickness 0.5. But the whole point of using this offset option is pretend that we don't have the we don't have the middle surface, and we actually want to use one or the other one uh, either the bottom surface, the top surface, and then take that into account. Okay, so uh, this is the situation. Okay, so let me go ahead and actually extract these because these are very simple. So let's do that and then we come back and uh, do the rest of the problem. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so uh, uh, you go to, uh, for example, the uh, generative shape design and then you extract. Where is the extract icon? It's extract icon is right here. Okay, so you extract right there, extract the uh, bottom surface and you can do it one by one and if you say tangent continuity it just does it all in one shot okay so this one is a, a, a bottom surface and uh, well, let, me, let me actually rename this thing so properties so we say bottom 
them. And let me also do the one with the top. I don't need both of them. Just remind me, I just need one. Uh, so uh, if you do the top one, again, using tangent continuity, it does it all at once. Otherwise, you have to do it three times. Uh, okay, and I'm going to call this thing uh, top. Once again, I want to emphasize, you don't have to do both of them. I'm pretending that I'm using the bottom one. Now, when you create these two surfaces, if you don't join it, then the normal to the, the surface is not specified. Actually, just to convince you that uh, we don't need the bottom one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this, delete the bottom one. Okay, so right there, I can even hide this. So this is the bottom surface. Okay, now. I'm going to join this. I join it. You select it. Uh, sorry, uh, select the join. Uh, select it, select that surface, and you say OK. What is the difference? Notice that when you double click on the bottom, of course, this surface shows up. It's a surface. There's no direction associated with it. But when you join it, there is a direction associated with this. So the positive direction of the surface, normal direction of the surface, is in this you can always flip these if you don't want it notice that it flipped okay nothing changes except the direction of the nodes so i'll put it back to where it was and you say okay very good okay so uh, let's apply some material to this metal <coughs> uh, metal uh, uh, let's make it out of steel on that part we say okay all right remember what we really want is the middle surface that we don't have. You might say, okay, can I, can I use the uh, offset in this particular workbench to create that other surface? The answer is yes, but we are trying to avoid actually physically offsetting the surfaces. Okay, we are trying to do it differently as it appears in the fundamental element solved. Okay, now we're gonna go to uh, uh, advanced meshing tool, advanced meshing tool, okay. Advanced meshing tool. Now notice that we are dealing with shell elements. So here I have three choices. Do the standard triangular mesh. This is called octree triangle mesh, which is also available in the generative structure analysis in Katia. Uh, but uh, if we do, if we use this, we don't have much uh, option about offsetting, uh, offsetting the the, the, the the finite element model. Let me go to, to my uh, uh, PowerPoint here. Notice that if you use this, then you don't have the offset, uh, offset icon that I'm uh, looking for. So I'm going to use either surface measure or advanced surface measure. I'll use surface measure here. And uh, notice that there is an offset showing up. OK. Uh, now, if, if you if you do it with these elements, then of course there's not much you can do. You should have extracted the middle surface in the first place. Okay, so let's go ahead back here. <clears throat> uh, there is advanced, uh, there, is the, there is a surface measure. You select that, okay? Now, first of all, notice that there is this red thing he shows up. This is in the opposite direction of the joint arrow. Joint arrow, remember, was pointing up. So this determines the Z direction, local direction of the elements, okay? If the arrow for the join was pointing down, then this guy would be pointing up. It's always in the negative of the joint arrow. Okay, now here, first of all, I can put the, the size that I want. Now, I think uh, for this particular problem, I'm gonna do 0 0.125, the size of the mesh, okay? And it's quad only and parabolic parabolic, eight noted, okay? But if you select the second tab, notice that there is an offset here, okay? There is an offset here. Let me, <clears throat> let me leave, leave the, this offset at zero and then mesh it and show you what happens, okay? So I said, okay, and then you have to mesh it and that is done by clicking on this guy. You see this, see right there, mesh the part. And then there is the mesh that's created, and then say OK, and exit. OK, so let me zoom in. I think I use too fine a mesh, OK? 
So let me go ahead. I'm going to change that to maybe 0 0.5. 0 0.25 was too small. Okay, so uh, let me go back here. Double click on this. Change that thing to 0 0.2, 0 0.5. Change that to 0 0.5. Okay, say okay. It says uh, this is going to change some stuff. We say fine and mesh it right there. See that? Okay, that, that's not much better. As a matter of fact, I can even make it even uh, uh, bigger. That, that's fine. So we say okay. Notice that when you do not specify an offset, offset is zero, what it does, it actually meshes that particular surface, which is not what I want. I know that this mesh should have been created on the mid surface, which I don't have to, but I know how far the mid surface is actually from this uh, surface that I uh, extracted. Uh, it's half of the thickness, remember, 0.25. So what I do, is I say, okay, just 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 watch this. This these shell elements are sitting on top of the surface that I selected. Double click on this, go to the offset geometry tab, offset, and put a 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and you say okay. Once again, it says there are some uh, modifications. Uh, do you want to go ahead? The answer is yes. And then zap it. I call this thing zapping it or meshing it. And say OK. And exit. Now, if you look closely, you see what happens. You see what happens. OK. It actually created the mesh 0.25 inches away from the bottom surface. There's only one problem. And that is, well, actually, I wanted this to be on the other side. Okay, I wanted to offset it in the other direction. There's two ways to fix this. One is to change the direction of the join. Remember, join has an arrow pointing up. You can go and flip that and mesh it, or you can change the side, the, the, the offset to be minus 0.25. Let me remind you what the minus means. These this these elements these elements uh, these elements uh, have a, a local z direction which is pointing down. Remember, opposite to the join arrow. Okay. When you say minus 0.25, means move it in the other direction. Say okay. Mesh it. Okay. Exit, and there we are. This is what we want. In other words, although I did not have the middle surface, I had the bottom surface, I was able to mesh that, mesh that uh, bottom surface, but say offset it by a certain value in the proper direction. Now this proper direction, the first time I put 0.25, it moved it downward, which is not what I want. So I changed that to minus 0.25, which moved it in the other direction, which is correct. Or I could have changed the direction of the, the join. Remember join, when you join it, you get an arrow associated with it. And uh, so uh, uh, if you flip the, the, the direction of the arrow down, then plus 0.25 offset, for, for mesh would have worked. I, I suggest you play with this thing and uh, work it out yourself, okay? Uh, by the way, just to show you what happened, uh, did I, uh, I think I deleted, I deleted my other, uh, yeah, I, I deleted my, my top surface. If I create the top surface or if I extract the top surface, it's gonna be uh, uh, above the so actually let's go ahead and do that. Go to, uh, go to part, okay, very good. So we say, uh, where is the, the pad? Right there. And then we extract the entire thing. And now if you go to, uh, now if you go to uh, advanced meshing tool, you can see, let me hide my part. Hide my pad. Uh, uh, hide the pad. Uh, let me do the following. Uh, let's go to generative structure analysis. Okay, 
showing the mesh. Okay, and also show me the uh, show me the the part. Okay, kind of hard to see here. Let me change this thing to uh, wireframe model. You can see that. So what we actually created, that mesh that we created, is exactly halfway between the top and the bottom surface. So that takes care of this first encounter with the offset. But I want to show you another another way that you can do this. So let me uh, let me let me go down here. This is already discussed. We already did this. So the other play 